Those two monkeys you were trying to find? Look at that over there. Coming out of the alley. Seven shots fired, 12th and church ambulance required. Hang in there, kid. Please. More light over there. Five, sir, David. Head of five, you're going to have a problem. Mr. Robinson, check by the line. Back to the drink. I'm going to move my back. Back in action. Four, four, seven, David. Eight out of ten cops retire after 20 years without ever firing their guns in the line of duty. These aren't the ones I write about. 
Movies and television live on this stuff. That's not a complaint. I'm as bad as they are. A shootout makes good copy. As long as we don't think about the fact there's someone in front of the bullet. And someone who pulled the trigger. Damn. You had me cold, Obi. If he fired, I was gone. You did what you had to do. I told him to stop. I told him to drop it, and it just wasn't time. Frankie, you had no choice. I guess. No guess. I'm telling you. God, I feel sick. How you doing? I'm okay. He'll be okay. Shakes you up. Kid pulled a gun. Simple as that. No, it's not there. It was more. It was more over there. We looked over there. Maybe he like threw it. Uh, flew out of his hand when he was hit. Yeah, maybe. Did you, uh, did you check back here at all? Don't worry. If it's here, we'll find it. I know it's here. It's okay. We'll find it. I'll teach you anything about this at the academy, Tommy. What they put in that counseling program. It's a crock. You get shook up this Indian for counseling. You're more worried about the guys that don't get shook up. You've forgotten so soon, huh, Chad? Are you kidding? I was a little older than Frankie, though. I didn't hit the guy. For about three weeks after, I could still see the bullet coming out of the gun. Got to write about that sometime. Maybe. I mean it. Next time we got a couple hours, we'll sit down and talk. You gotta talk to the boss. Lieutenant. What happened, Kevin? Who fired you? Frankie. The kid had a gun, right? Yeah. Okay, a couple of hundred reports to fill out. Shouldn't be too complicated. They came running out the alley. We chased him right back in. Came across here. Somebody was there. A car pulled out right through here. Hey, Frankie! I gotta keep him away from there. Uh, where was I? A car over there. Uh, right. Well, we got police working on it. See what you can find out. Agnes. Anything over there? Okay, let's rope off this whole area and get some light in here. Get forensic in and find out what happened. Hobie? Frank? Got a broken lady's heel here and a strand of beads. A fight, right? Looks like they jumped a woman. Okay. Keep looking. This might be why they were running. Let's get uh, Colby and Carson to canvas these buildings. I want to know everybody who parked in the lot. Got any kind of a make on it yet? Uh, just a blue sedan, that's it. Hey, Jambo, we got something. Excuse me. what I saw. There was a gun. He had a gun. It's all right. It's all right. We'll find it. Bag it, check it for prints, and keep looking. We've gone over every inch, Lieutenant. Well, then go over it again. You just found that. You might find something else. What do you think, Frank? Could that be what you said? He had a gun. It was dark. Maybe you could. I'm telling you, he had a gun. OK, now you two listen to me. It might get a little hairy around here, but believe me, everything's going to be OK. Right. Now, ballistics is going to want to see your weapons. Get them down there forthwith. Mine wasn't fired. 
It's all right. They're going to want to see it anyway. You'll get them back. Now, why don't the two of you take a couple of minutes to get your stories together? Get our stories together? Yeah, lots of people are going to be asking questions. Well, let him ask. The guy pulled a gun on me. I didn't say he didn't, Jim. Things happen fast. They get jumbled up. It's for your own good. I'm Frankie. What the hell do you think we're going to do? Get our stories together. Calm down, will you? It's all anybody ever says. Get in the car. Okay, from the top. We saw them coming out of the alley. You recognize them? Of course I recognize them. We almost caught them the other night. Okay, good. That's important. Then what happened? No, we started to fall on. No, they were running. That's what I'm talking about. They came out of the alley running. All right, they were running. Well, you just try and take it easy. Will you try to calm down? They were running, they weren't running. What? What's the difference? He was pointing a gun at me, Kevin. I saw it, you saw it. What are we talking about? Frankie, relax. You know I'm going to back you up all the way. Back me up? You saw it. I was behind you. The car pulled out. If you didn't see it, tell me you didn't see it. I don't need you lying for me. I wasn't planning to. You said you saw a gun. That is good enough for me. There, tell him you're guarding the room. Yeah, I know there's somebody there. I want you to handle it. Why well, you talk to him if he comes to? Maybe somebody will visit him. We can find out who the hell he is. Okay, Fleece, thanks. That's Fleece. He's at the hospital. He's still in critical, but he's holding on. O'Brien. Yeah, okay, when's he coming in? Yeah, I know, not a word. He knows it, too. We're not going anywhere. We're staying right here. Yeah. The DEA is on his way. What do we need a lawyer for? Well, it's not costing you anything. That's what you pay your dues for. Oh, that uh, high heel and those beads we found. It could be a mugger and it could be an accomplice. We got a couple of guys checking the emergency rooms. Maybe we'll get lucky. Yeah, maybe. I, I feel like I should be helping you out or something. You got enough to take care of right now. When this is cleared up, fine. Want to give us a minute? Frankie, close the door. Listen, uh, kid's gonna be okay? Yeah, it'll be okay. Whose desk is this? Carson's? Doesn't he ever work? He's very neat. I'll see. Why don't you sit down, both of you? All right, here's the situation. About 12 minutes, my phone's gonna start ringing off the hook. Guaranteed. Everybody's gonna want some answers. Let's start with the basics. You recognize these two kids? No question about it. They did a whole bunch of break-ins over by the projects on uh, Epsom and uh, Sutcliffe. And then that old lady with the head strummer chased them, remember? We almost caught them the other night. Good. Pull all the papers on them. They're going to want to see everything you got. What about the other kid? They were the same two kids. That's what we were telling you. No, I mean, uh, what happened to him? Where was he when you fired? Oh, he went over the fence, I think. I didn't see him after that. He could have taken the gun. Could have. They're going to ask you about that gun. Did you see a gun? I saw a gun. Couldn't have been a flashlight. I'm telling you, Lieutenant, I saw a gun. And you fired? Yeah. No, he yelled first. To the kid? To me. He's got a gun, then he fired. And you saw the gun? It was that car I turned. You didn't see it? I didn't have time. He couldn't see it from where he was. I'm the one who fired. I'm the one who saw it. What the hell's the problem? All right, Frankie. I believe you saw a gun. Kevin believes it. That makes three of us in this room. But from this minute on, everybody who walks in that door is not going to believe it. The prosecutor's got somebody on the way. Internal Affairs has got somebody on the way. And nobody's playing games anymore. There are only two people who know for sure there was a gun. One of them's in critical condition in a hospital. Even if he does pull through, he's not going to want to help you. And if he doesn't? It's a whole different ball game. 
And the other one's a kid that ran away. God knows when we'll ever catch up with him. Now, I'm not trying to scare you, Jambo. But I want you to know what you're up against. Oh, excuse me, Lieutenant. I'm uh, supposed to take a statement from Frank. Go ahead. I think we've covered just about everything. You okay, Frank? It's just on the record. Uh, I'm sorry, we're not ready just yet. Would you mind waiting outside for a minute? Thanks. Have a seat, Frank. That's all right, I'll just stand. Your attorney's on the way, isn't he? Yeah, he should be coming down soon. Fine. Well, I'm not going to take your statement until he gets here. Would you like a cup of coffee, Frank? No, that's all right. What's this for, anyway? I had this whole speech prepared. Uh, maybe I'd just better give it to you straight. The prosecutor's office thinks it would be a good idea if we could put you in front of the grand jury tomorrow morning. What? They don't even know who the kid is. And it sounds like they're looking to indict me already. Nobody is looking to indict you. We are looking for a clean, impartial determination of exactly what happened. I've been telling everybody all night exactly what happened. I'm sure you have. Uh... I'm sorry, Frank, but it's a necessary step. I'm sure you don't want it to look like the department's sweeping anything under the carpet. It never entered my mind. You're not going to like it. The article's OK. There's an editorial on page 10. Do you write it? Editorials, never. I haven't filed my column yet. You work for this rag. The hell's that supposed to mean? Look at this junk. Use of unnecessary force, unarmed suspect. Read all the words. It's if, if, if. If it turns out there wasn't a gun, if it turns out. This paper is setting him up for a lynching. It's an inquiry, that's all. The, the paper has a responsibility. To stack the deck? Why don't you print Frank's side of the story? It's there, according to Detective Jambone. One sentence of according to, and three paragraphs of what if he was lying. You don't call that inflammatory? I don't call it anything. He says there was a gun, none was found. Those are the facts. If they find a gun, that's the fact. What if they don't find a gun? Did that make it a fact that it wasn't there? No, but it makes it a hell of a question. The kid was shot, Kevin. Why? Because he had a gun. What do you want? That Frank should have waited? Then maybe they'd be drawing chalk lines around his body. Huh? Your paper sure as hell know how to handle that. Nice big two-page spread on the funeral. All right, you got a tough job. Lots of people got tough jobs. What do we do? Every time a cop shoots somebody, we don't ask questions? That's the price you pay for carrying a pistol. Makes you accountable. We're not talking about some trigger-happy psycho. We're talking about Frank. I'm sorry it's Frank, but it doesn't change anything. Lieutenant Hearns from Internal Affairs. Where do I find Detective Jim Boney? He's in with the prosecutor's office. When he finishes, he'll be back here. Where's O'Brien? You found him. Good. Maybe we can speed this up. Might I have to ask you a few questions? Not without my lawyer. Didn't we hear that your gun wasn't fired? Not without my lawyer, did you hear that? I don't know what else you heard. Shoot the kid, John Boney. It's Jam Bone. Answer the question. I shot him so he wouldn't shoot me. With a flashlight? With a gun. He had a gun. Where is it? If I knew that, I wouldn't be here. Maybe. You ever see a shrink? How bad's your drinking problem? All right, now, you know better than that. He doesn't have a drinking problem. He can answer that. 
He doesn't have a drinking problem. Get onto something else. You take any pills while you work? No, we've just gone through this. He doesn't drink. He doesn't take drugs. He doesn't take pills. It's the last time I'm telling you. These are legitimate questions. You want to ask him what happened, he'll answer. You want to jerk him around? We're walking right out of here. You saw these kids before. I told you that. But they got away and you had it in for them, right? We were interested in apprehending them. It's like, um, they were on top of your list. I don't have a list. Do you ever dream about killing people? No, but ask me again in the morning. You want to be a hard case, John Boney? We can make your life real unpleasant. As opposed to this, right? Whatever you like. That's way too big. Two seconds ago, you said it was too small. That was too small. This is too big. You're supposed to be a trained observer. You want my shield number? Frankie? Not yet. Any idea on that kid in the hospital? If he was yours, would you climb him? I can see you in a wheelchair. Days yet young. You're talking about the same kid. It's not finished yet. Well, his eyes are too far apart. What about that mystery lady in the parking lot? Obi, we must have checked a hundred emergency rooms. If she went for help, she's got a hospital someplace we've never heard of. Well, maybe you and Freddie better start checking out doctors. Hey, there must be 3,000 of them. Well, we'll need some help. That'll make it a 1,000 apiece. Start with the ones near the parking lot. We got witnesses from all those other burglars who could ID him. I don't give a damn about burglaries. He had a gun, and maybe she saw it. Please get that finished up and circulated, all right? How you doing? You ready? We don't have to be there till 11. Yeah, all right. Let's go. Hey, good luck, Frank. You gonna be OK, Frank? Yeah, I'm gonna be OK. Hey, no problem, Frank. You got a one-track mind. We're talking real birds here. What are we gonna do with birds? Later. Stuff comes in handy when it snows. You get stuck, you sprinkle a little under the wheels. Sometimes I come here when I got things on my mind. It calms me down. This calms you down? Yeah. Wanna try? Yeah, that's it. Instead of hitting them over the head with it, just present it right in front of them. What do you think's gonna happen? The grand jury? Oh, with the grand jury, internal affairs, all the kids still in critical condition, you know? Can't stop the bleeding. Just call the hospital on it. Cute. I knew there was 
as we catch. Yeah, I got a problem. This is exactly how I imagined uh, spending my declining years, you know? Just shut up. Feed the pigeons. Why aren't you lighten up, huh? I happen to be a very sensitive kind of guy. Terrible form. Can you read the papers? Hear that problem we were having with those kids? Yeah, I do. Take a look at these. I'm supposed to see anything. The guy's got tubes all up his face. He's yeah. telling you, too. I don't know. I, I mean, I've seen this kid, but then again, I've seen a hundred kids like this, man. He looks like any punk in the world, okay? Come on, Albie. We're gonna be late. They're boosting departments all up and down the Lower West Side. They must be selling the stuff. I want to know who they are. It's as simple as that. Hey, I'll talk to some people. Get back to me. All right. Keep your feathers clean. Thanks, Wayne. I do. For the record, Detective Jambone, could you please state your name and shield number? Detective Second Grade, Frank Jambone, shield 1209. And your assignment? Major K Squad. Okay, okay, okay. Look, I'll, I'll grant you that. If the kid had been black, they'd have to end up. White cop shoots black kid wouldn't even been close. So the kid's white. That makes it not close? The community pressure is not the same. Hey, between you and me, I'm betting they indict him anyway. Five bucks, what do you say? I remember it exactly. I said, he's got a gun. Are you saying you addressed your partner, you didn't address the suspect? Not then. I, I shot it to them before. When I saw a gun, I shot it to my partner. You didn't order the young man to drop the gun. There wasn't time. He was pointing it at me. Well, if you didn't warn him, he certainly didn't warn you. How do you know he intended to shoot? Mr. Foreman, I don't think we should be asking Detective Jambone to speculate on other people's intentions. We don't have the same rules as a trial, Miss Fredericks. There's no judge here. As foreman of this grand jury, I want to know his speculations. Anything that can tell us about his state of mind at the time. All right. Detective Jambone, when the suspect pointed the gun at you, did you believe he intended to shoot? That's exactly what I believed. Oh, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. Aren't we rushing right past the key point here? I mean, we're all assuming there was a gun. There was a gun. That is for this grand jury to decide. You can decide whether you believe it or not. He had a gun. You're aware that no gun was found? Yes, I am, sir. And that a flashlight was found? Yes, sir. But you're still certain there was a gun? Yes, sir. There's no doubt in your mind that you could have mistaken that flashlight for a gun? No doubt, sir. But what did the gun look like? What did it look like? The gun. What did it look like? Was it a revolver, an automatic? I can't really say, sir. Well, I don't understand. If you saw the gun, why can't you tell us what it looked like? Well, it was dark. They were too far away. I mean, they weren't... I could still see the gun. It was pointing right at me. I could see... Detective Jambone! Weren't you looking for these boys in connections with other crimes? No, I'm sorry, Doctor. We don't know the exact nature of the wounds. Dr. Martin, oh, no. this is Detective Burns from Mid-South Precinct. No, yes, I don't know his name. Impossible. You have him as a John Doe, okay, the boy who got shot last night? Yeah, I'll wait. Ray, Ray, will you stand up? No, Ray, 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 no, I just want to know how he's doing. This is the 40th time I've called. They just connect me with patient information and they tell me how he's doing. What's the problem all of a sudden? Frank, can I talk to you a minute? Uh, no, I'll call you back in a while. What is it, Lou? Just uh, come into my office, okay?
In. You want to give it to him? They suspended me, pending the grand jury decision. What? Wait a minute. Guilty till proven innocent, right? Frank! Yes, I am, ma'am. You're the one that killed my son. He's dead? You Stand murderer! <laughs> murderer, you That's all right. I'm going to be leaving in a minute. I just wanted to thank you. I mean, at the grand jury. I, I saw. I, I know. I know what you were trying to do to help me out, and I. I just. I just wanted to tell you. That's all. I'm sorry. It was stupid, wasn't it? No, it wasn't stupid, Frank. It's all right. It doesn't matter anymore. Frank, why don't you sit down? And let me fix you a drink, okay? Matter. It's going to be a murder charge now, isn't it? We don't even know that there is going to be a charge. And of course, it's not going to be murder. You know that. I killed him. I really can't discuss it, Frank. I already told you it doesn't matter. Will you please stop saying that? All right. I'm sorry. <sighs> He's dead. He's dead, and I don't know. I don't know the first thing about him when I killed him. We don't know anything about the people we work with. We're in a business that deals with strangers. I killed him! Frank, he had a gun. You don't understand. You don't understand. I thought I saw a gun, but what if I was wrong? Frank, Frank, don't go. Who's there? Tom Kirkwood, the Eagle, Mrs. Stans. I don't want to talk to no reporters. This isn't an interview, ma'am. It's important. your son, Mrs. Stans. You want me to tell you about him? What can I tell? You can tell me whatever you like. 
There's no one. I thought too. Is this him? Was, Mr. Kirkwood. That's not been my boy for a long, long time. Drugs? Drugs? Of course, drugs! <laughs> they start him on the drugs, these boys. And then he's just like them. I know how <laughs> difficult this must be for you, Mrs. Stans. But... Toby, you're the only person who can help. The young man who shot him. The police officer? He come to the hospital. I know him, Mrs. Stans. He's not the kind to do something he didn't have to. He has a mother, too. You know the kinds of things I've been saying about him? He could go to jail. He doesn't deserve that. What do you want from me? Anything. What happened? Who was he with? What was he doing? How did he end up in an alley, Mrs. Stans? I talk to you about my boy. I tell you that my boy was bad. This I cannot do. I appreciate that, Mrs. Stans. Please, would you think about it? Think of his mother. She must be suffering for him. There's been enough suffering. Don't you think, Mrs. Stance? Worried, you know. I wasn't planning on jumping off a bridge. That's a relief. Grab a pew. See if the innkeeper rustles us up a little food, hmm? What do you guys want? I want a drink. Want some to eat? No, just a cup of coffee. I'll get it. Hey, it's okay. Sit down. What do you want? Milk and sugar? Yeah, it's fine. you go to see Dorothy for? I don't know. It was just some things that I had to say. Just say them? I don't know. I used to imagine what it would be like. It wasn't like this. I saved somebody's life for something. Big hero, right? They never make a hero. I'm learning. Thanks. God, I'm a... I'm a cop, damn it. I'm just a cop. I'm not a genius. I'm not the Lone Ranger. I'm out there, and I'm looking down the barrel of a gun. I mean, what the hell do they want from me? What do you want from yourself, Frank? I just wanted to stop, Nikki. That's all I want. Well, you do it. You make yourself do it. I wish it was as easy as that. I didn't say it would be easy. I said that's what you got to do. Believe me, Frank, this is something I know about. Yeah, okay. No. No. I want you to listen to me. You didn't know Tony. When he was shot, they wanted to tell me how it happened. I didn't want to hear. I didn't want them to tell me that he had done something reckless and brave and lost his life doing it. I didn't want to hear that. Nikki, don't, please. No, it's okay. I want to talk to him. I want to tell him. Tell him what? Not to be a fool, damn it. Not to act like everybody else's lives are more important than your own. That's not it, Nikki. Oh, yes, it is. Listen to yourself. He turned on you, Frank. He pulled a gun. Now, I don't care if there wasn't really a gun. You are not a machine. You are not a god. You are a person. You protected yourself. You protected your own life. 
You... I want you to tell me... What the hell is wrong with that? Confusion and outrage and a lynch mob spirit. Oh, confusion, outrage of a lynch mob spirit. Yeah, that's better. When a 25-year-old cop shoots in the dark, we can understand that. We may have our questions. We should, in fact. But we all understand darkness and fear and the isolation of a young cop suddenly facing a gun, or even what he takes to be a gun. But when the police department shoots in the dark, we can't understand. Even before the grand jury has concluded its deliberations, Detective Frank Jambone has been suspended from the force. What kind of message are they giving us? Maria, all of it. You tell them everything. We do not hide anymore. We do not hide what my son was. You do not hide what they did to you. When I read that he, he was shot, well, oh, my God help me, I wished he were dead. And then he was dead, and that's when that's when she came, and his mother, Miss... Maria. Well, this is important. When it happened, did you see a gun? He had a gun. You sure it wasn't the other guy? No, it was Dicky. He held it right to my head. And the other one had a knife, and he stuck it right here. No, Maria, you say it. Say all of it. Uh, he, he was on top of me. And, and when he was finished, he took out a gun and, and he made me tell him that I liked it. And he, he just kept making me say things. And he just ran away. We appreciate you coming in, Maria. Detective Tolan will uh, prepare a statement for you to sign. <laughs> Mrs. Stans, the boy who was with your son, do you know who he is? Yes, I know who he is. For years, I know who he is. Spadina. Chucky Spadina. That's what he called him. You ask on the street. Everybody knows Chucky. In the parking lot by the theaters. That's where he deals. Well, let's go get him.
shoot. He's got a gun! Frank Jan Bone was cleared of all charges today after a grand jury heard testimony detailing the recovery of a gun that disappeared when Jan Bone fatally wounded 18-year-old Richard Stans Tuesday night. <laughs> <laughs>